Now you're probably wondering what we're doing here in such posh surroundings. Well, it's Whittlebury Park near Silverstone Race Circuit, and the reason we are here is this, the brand new KTM Duke 390. Now they've invited us down here to have a play on it today, and this is about this design for people with a new A2 license in mind. But while we were here, we thought we should cast an eye over their full range of learning legal bikes. So Susie, when KTM brought out the Duke 125 back in 2011, it took the small capacity or learner bike market, as we like to call it, by storm. And it's now the best selling 125 sports bike in Europe. And I think you can see why, can't you? It's definitely the meanest looking 125 on the road, isn't it? And I, I think, imagine turning up at college or university, your late teens, early 20s on that. When you're trying to get people into biking, it's to appeal to their slightly childhood side. You want something to be cool, you want it to be aggressive, you want it to be colourful. And I mean, look at it, with the coated trellis frame through to the actual proper parts of it, WP suspension, Brembo or Fabre as they're known, brakes. It's a proper bike. It doesn't feel like a 125. No, it really, really doesn't. Only the size of the bike makes you think that you're riding a bigger bike. And that, I think, is a really important thing to mention today. The 125, 200 and 390 all have the same chassis and frame. And the bikes are literally all the same size, same switch gears. So there's not a discernible difference apart from the engine. And as you say, you get on the 125, it feels like a big bike. And as a young rider, that's something you really want. They don't need to give you the feel as you go on to bigger bikes and bigger machines to have that confidence, but also so you don't feel like you're on a little kind of pizza bike getting blown around by the wind and bullied by traffic. But the thing is, is that they look really bulky. They look like they're going to be heavy, but when you ride them, they're really light and agile. But it's not just the fact that they're light. I mean, each bike is powered by a single cylinder engine, which is really refined, but blimey, it produces quite a lot of power. In the 125, you've got 14 brake horsepower, and the 200 is 27, and in the 390, a whopping 44 brake horsepower, which when you consider the bikes are 150 kilo wet, that's not bad. But to be able to ride the 390 on an A2 licence, you have to have it restricted by one and a half brake horsepower. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, but the indeed. dealers will do that for you for free. There was a massive difference, wasn't there, between power of the 125 and the 390, I found so anyway. No, I think you're completely right. I mean, on paper, it is a 30 brake horsepower difference, but it's also the way it delivers it. I'm really impressed with the 125 low down. It's got loads of torque and loads of grunt, but it ran out of steam with Fatal Wilkins on the back at about 60 miles an hour, where on the 200 and 390, you just seem to have a little bit more oomph. On the 200, it was running out about 70, 75, and the 390, obviously, a little bit more. I wouldn't know, because doing those speeds on English roads would be illegal. They don't just go well, they stop well too. And the 125 is the first 125 to have ABS. Yeah, completely. In fact, they were real pioneers bringing that in. And when you're learning, what better technology would you want in your bike then it's going to allow you I mean I don't know about you my first accident I had in 125 was grabbing the front brake too hard following a car too closely and I came off you don't know how powerful the brakes are From a personal point of view, I love riding KTM's off-road and they do so well in the motocross, enduro market, um, green laning, people love KTM's off-road. But on the road, this is the first time that I've ridden a KTM, but they really are coming into their own now, aren't they? KTM have literally identified the road sports bike market and specifically the small capacity bike market as one they really want to dominate. In fact, they can see their market almost quadrupling in this area in the next five years. They want to be the number one sports bike maker by 2017, which is a mighty claim indeed. So I think in the next few years, we will be able to see some other radical models, maybe a sports 125, maybe a sports bike RC390, who knows? But yeah, they are taking this sector of the market very seriously. And I think you can see that when you look at the three Dukes we've been riding today because it's the attention to detail. So price-wise, Luke, the 125, 3995, the 200, 4195, and then the 390, 4495. But do you know which one I'm going to pick as my favourite? Uh, I'm going to guess, the 125? Yes, it is going to be the 125, <laughs> and do you know why? I imagine because it's going to get so many people into biking. It's exactly that. It is. To me, what biking is all about, when you're young, you want something colourful, vibrant, independent, fun, and just great to ride. And I don't know this anymore, but I've been told it's pretty cool. It's got bags of personality, hasn't really it? really has. But for £500 more, you can get the 390, and when you've got the full bike licence, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? You'd you go really for the 390. like that, don't you? Yeah, I really liked it. So in other words, we like the 125, we like the 390, we actually like the 200, but don't really see it fitting in the UK. I think what we're trying to say is actually, if you're a learner, legal rider, or if you're looking at getting into biking, you have got so many nice, cool and exciting options that you probably didn't have a few years ago. 
And guys, that is a major turn on that one, two, five. Turning up, turning up at uni in that, on that. Amazing.